Hello class, welcome to 6.1 Warmth and Coldness. So we're starting our new chapter here. Chapter 5 was all about energy and power. Chapter 6 is about a specific type of energy. We're talking about thermal energy now, which is all about heat. This first lesson is warmth and coldness, and it's mostly review of what you've learned in science class and in chemistry class. Um, so we'll, we'll see a couple of those ideas. The first part says vibrations of atoms and molecules and we're talking about the kinetic molecular theory. The kinetic molecular, molecular theory is the idea that objects are made up of, of par particles, made up of particles that attract each other So that means that they have potential energy. That's the attraction between the particles. And move around. They also move around. And that's their kinetic energy. That is our kinetic molecular theory. So objects are made up of these little particles. They attract each other and they move around. That gives it the potential energy and the kinetic energy of any object. Down here we have a picture of solids, liquids, and gases. You're familiar with these ideas, solids, liquids, and gases. And you know that with solids, all the particles are sort of packed together and they might vibrate around back and forth. And that's actually what heat is, is the little vibrations, the little movements that they're, uh, they're doing. Okay. So they're moving around, but they don't really move around a lot. They mostly stay where they are. So as we heat a solid, as we heat a solid, the particles vibrate faster. And you can see the picture below shows the, the, all of these little particles vibrating a bit. As we heat it enough, we get what's called melting, and it becomes a liquid. And then for a liquid, as we heat it, the particles still vibrate faster as well, just like a solid. And they move from place to place. So in liquids, the particles actually start to move. And the more you heat them up, they, the more they will move. They won't just vibrate, they'll actually start moving around. And when you heat them enough, you start boiling, and it'll become a, a gas. And then as you heat a gas, the particles will move around faster. And all of this comes from the kinetic molecular theory. The idea that they're, it's made up of these little particles, and as we heat them, we're just giving it more kinetic energy. Right? We're giving the particles more movement when we heat it up. That's what heating something up is. Now you notice we have melting and boiling. The opposite direction is condensation, to go from gas to liquid, and freezing, to go from liquid to solid. All right. Now, like I said, this lesson is mostly just review of ideas that you've seen before. This next idea is thermal energy. Now, this might be new. I, I don't know whether you've seen this. But thermal energy is what I've just been saying. This is the total kinetic and potential energy Total kinetic and potential energy possessed by a substance's particles. So if we take all the particles and add up all their kinetic energy, all their potential energy, that gives us 
the thermal energy. That's what thermal energy is. And thermal energy, we're going to be looking at that this whole u this whole chapter. It's um, it's this idea of of heat, temperature. It's all related. Now, thermal energy is only transferred, only transferred from hot objects. to cold objects. That's how thermal energy is transferred. A hot object has more thermal energy, and when it comes in contact with a colder object, it gives it some of its thermal energy. Now, we have a way of measuring, we, we want to measure thermal energy. We don't really have an, a way of measuring directly thermal energy, but we can measure temperature. Temperature is the average, the average kinetic object, uh, kinetic energy, of an object's particles, of the particles. So it's different from thermal energy. Thermal energy was the total kinetic and potential energy you add it all up together. Whereas temperature is the average instead of the total, and it's only kinetic energy instead of potential. Okay, so we're just measuring one aspect of thermal energy with temperature. Temperature, to measure it, we use a thermometer. So a thermometer is a device to measure temperature And a thermometer is made of glass. And it has, I'll say, with mercury or alcohol, mercury or alcohol inside the tube. There's two pictures to the right of a thermometer. And the first one is when a thermometer isn't as hot. And you can see that the line, the, the red bit of this thermometer hasn't gone up as high as in the second picture, where the red bit has gone up. So it, it was maybe around here, and it moved up to that point. What's happening is we have the glass of the thermometer, and we have the liquid inside. In this case, it's either mercury or alcohol. And you can see outside of the thermometer are a bunch of particles moving around. And you can see that these particles aren't moving very fast, and these ones are moving faster. They have larger lines. When they're moving faster, they hit the glass faster, which causes all of those particles to bounce around. And when they're bouncing around, that means they have more thermal energy. That means they have a higher temperature. So we're causing the glass to start bouncing around more, and then the glass particles bounce around, and they smack into the alcohol particles, the red particles inside. And then it causes those red ones to move around faster. The red ones are liquid, so they can actually expand and contract more. So it means that inside this glass tube, the alcohol expands and it takes up more space, and then we're able to, s to read how high up it went, and that can tell us our temperature. That's how a thermometer works. Okay, but it's all this idea of transferring thermal energy. All the particles are bouncing into each other. The, the faster they're going, the hotter they are. And so the hot ones are going really fast. They smack into the colder ones. They cause the colder ones to speed up a bit, which means that they get a bit hotter. And that's our transfer of energy. All right, we have three ways of measuring temperature. The first one is the Celsius scale, and you're probably familiar with the Celsius scale. The important points of this is zero degrees Celsius, and that's the melting point, melting, that's the melting point of water. And we have 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water.
And so the Celsius scale is what we use in Canada when we're talking about temperatures. It's pretty easy to work with because those numbers, 0 and 100 degrees, make a lot of sense. So I can say if it's 0 degrees Celsius outside, then it means that water is just starting to freeze. We're starting to get ice outside. And if it's 100 degrees, well, hopefully it's not 100 degrees outside because we would be boiling. But if I have a pot of water and it's at 100 degrees Celsius, that's when my water is going to start boiling. So that's pretty useful. Now, the Fahrenheit scale is used in the United States, and it is different. So 0 degrees Fahrenheit, it is special. Right, just like zero degrees Celsius is special, for zero degrees Fahrenheit, this is the melting point not of water, but of brine. And brine is a salt water. It's, uh, it's water mixed with a bunch of salt. And don't ask me why they thought that was the best thing to measure, but that's what the Fahrenheit scale is based on. And 100 degrees Fahrenheit is the boiling point of brine. So that's why the Fahrenheit scale is the way it is. Um, now, if we want to actually talk about water, in Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the melting point, and the boiling point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's for water. So those are the corresponding 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. So you don't need to know about the Fahrenheit scale, really, for this course. We don't use it. It's useful to know what it is, but we're not going to use it in this, this course. But what we are going to use is the Kelvin scale. And the Kelvin scale is exactly the same as Celsius, so it's equal to Celsius plus 273. So if you take any Celsius number and add 273, you get the Kelvin value. And the, the reason the Kelvin scale is the way it is, it's because 0 Kelvin, you see we use a, a K that, a K there, um, 0 Kelvin is equal to absolute 0. An absolute zero is where something has no kinetic energy at all. No kinetic energy. So if you go out into outer space and just let something sit there forever and lose all of its energy, well, lose all of its energy to other sources. If you have something that has no kinetic energy, it's frozen as much as it possibly can be, that's zero Kelvin. You can't get any colder than zero Kelvin. That's why the Kelvin scale exists. Over here to the right, we have two equations. So if you want to get the Celsius temperature from a Kelvin temperature, you use this formula. The temperature in Celsius is equal to the temperature in Kelvin minus 273. So for instance, if I say right now that it's 283 Kelvin outside, well, you could say 283 minus 273, that's 10 degrees Celsius. And the other way around, to get a Kelvin temperature from Celsius, you add 273. We'll use those equations in two little problems here. It says ethyl alcohol boils at 78.3 degrees Celsius. What is this temperature in Kelvin? Well, we use our formula. Tk is equal to T, whoops, Tc plus 273. And this gives us 78.3 plus 273 which is equal to 351.3 Kelvin. The last one here, ethyl alcohol freezes at 159 Kelvin. What is this temperature in degrees Celsius? Well, Tc is equal to Tk minus 273. 159, oops, 159 minus 273 is equal to negative 114 degrees Celsius. There you go. So that's the bit of math in this lesson. Um, this is conceptual, and hopefully a lot of it looks familiar. That's the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.